So instead of talking about all these news stories, I'm going to talk about something entirely different. Uh, and that is a typical Savage Saturday. This is the day before the Super Bowl. It was extraordinarily quiet in San Francisco. The roads were empty because all of the good Americans were shopping for the Super Bowl. They were buying their, their provisions as though there was something amazing that was going to happen. They bought their hot dogs. They, they bought their hamburger meat. They bought their beer. They bought their soft drinks. They're getting ready to party on Sunday. And that's okay, as I say. That's truly an American thing to do. And better people than I watched the game. In fact, a better person than I and my family uh, went to the game. And he enjoyed it. But I didn't watch it. And so what I did was I went to San Francisco on Saturday, just to give you a little peek as to what I actually do. And I visited the new radio studios that are being built for KGO, KSFO, uh, KNBR, and all the whole cluster of cumulus stations being built out uh, right now in San Francisco. And uh, the chief engineer, Gary, kindly had me in there. And he said, please don't bring Teddy. I said, no, I'm bringing Teddy. He said, please don't bring Teddy. It's a construction zone. There's wires. There's nails. There's sawdust. So I left Teddy at home, and I visited the new radio studio in downtown San Francisco, and I was shown the new KSFO studio where I may broadcast from time to time, and I said, that's beautiful. That's great. That's wonderful. Long overdue. Congratulations to Cumulus for building this out. It looks, it looks beautiful. And then I proceeded to walk up to North Beach, which is the Italian – esque district of san francisco it's the reason i moved to san francisco i did not move here for any other reason other than the italian district because it reminded me of a small village in europe a village that sort of exists here and there but it still exists here and it butts up against chinatown which is very interesting unto itself because there's a blending of some of the chinatown elements in north beach in terms of certain stores that sell goods from china which i want to tell you about in a minute Apropos of politics, you're going to not believe where I'm leading you. you know, just follow the bouncing mic. So as the day went on, I walked into North Beach. I visited my friend Giovanni at Pinocchio Restaurant, and he said to me, Michael, Michael, you give me the inspiration to go on. I said, Giovanni, Giovanni, trust me, it gives me perspiration to do so. And he had a laugh out of that one, and I, I walked on. I, You know, they all offered me a free drink, a free this. I didn't want to drink in the middle of the day, so I said, thank you. And then I was walking around, and I went up Grant Avenue, and I went past a Chinese antique store that's been there forever, for 40 years. And I, I love to look in this place. I rarely go in. Well, I stopped dead in my tracks. In the window, there were large, painted, wooden food dogs that I had never seen in my life. Now, all of you have seen food dogs. You know what they are? You know the big lion dogs that you see in front of houses? They're done in all forms. They're done in plaster. They're done in bronze. They're done in ceramic. These were in wood, and they were very ugly. And as you well know, they were created to, uh, to you know, the Chinese have food dogs or lion dogs, and they use these things in front of houses to drive away evil spirits, right? I couldn't resist going in and asking the owner what they were. and when they're... She said, well, they're Ming Dynasty, which means early 1700s. And I asked her how much they were, and I was floored by it. And I said, I have to have these things. And I eventually bought these things, which I'll tell you more about another time. They're, they're a Ming Dynasty food dogs. But let me explain why I'm telling you this long story. You may say, who cares about this stuff? Tell me about Obama better. No, listen carefully. As I researched food dogs, I learned the following. I learned that some of these food dogs were even crafted to be roof tiles. You know, out of roof tile ceramic. Now, now hold on now. Here comes the punchline. During Mao's communist revolution between 1968 and 1974, the vermin called Red Guards were going through China, destroying every artifact that reminded the Chinese people of their cultural past. They were destroying pagodas, and they particularly wanted to destroy the food dogs as a symbol of the bourgeoisie and of, cl and of class differentiation. You see, only the wealthy had food dogs in front of their doors. The poor couldn't afford them. And so these little communist red guards went around the countryside getting the food dogs and destroying them, so people hid them, right? Listen to why I'm telling you this. Because right now, we have red guards in America. You may not know this. My entire show is warning you about what the red guards are doing to America. What do I mean by red guards? During a communist revolution... What they do is they purge a society of all cultural memory. 
Everything that is of any value, they destroy in order to destroy the unity and the history of the nation. And so the red guards of our media, the red guards of our academia, the red guards under Barack Obama are busily transforming America in many ways. We know about the economic ways. We know about him flooding us with illiterate, many diseased, third world, illegal aliens. Okay, we, we know about those. But culturally, his red guards in academia, his red guards on the networks are busily destroying every edifice of our culture. That's what I'm trying to warn you about. And that's why I told you the story of the Chinese food dogs. They were symbolic of a part of the Chinese culture. And Mao Zedong's red guards went around destroying them because they were unfair, because they represented a time in China when there were class differences. You get it? Fairness, income redistribution. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So who are the Red Guards of America? Who are they? Well, the Occupy movement are Red Guards. They're the street thugs, the Ferguson thugs that Obama stimulated, along with Holder and Sharpton. They're the Red Guards. But they're the Red Guards of the street. They're the thugs. They're the initial, they're going to be the shock troops or the army. But the more dangerous Red Guards are the men in pancake makeup and the girls in tight skirts with lipstick. The Red Guards of the media are the real dangerous ones. The Red Guards in academia are the worst vermin on the planet. So if you take a class in chemistry, they lecture you about Gaia and income redistribution. But I see a future of barbaric slavery if we don't stand up to them. And that's why I say when I recently visited the Chinese antique store in San Francisco, this unusually colorful pair of wooden food dogs in the window stopped me in my walk, and I went in. They were very ugly and colorful. And remember, they were created to ward off evil spirits, placed typically at the entrance of the homes of the rich. And these temple lion dogs were destroyed during the Mao Zedong Communist Revolution. The Red Guards roamed China and destroyed such dogs as symbols of a decadent bourgeois culture. In Obama's terms, unfairness. So people in China tried to remove and hide these treasures of Chinese vast cultural heritage, some even removing the ceramic roof tiles of such lion dogs to save them from Mao's rapacious young thugs of political correctness that he named Red Guards. Does it sound familiar? Well, you see, our rogue president's Red Guards are rapidly destroying every vestige of America's cultural heritage, from the schools to the universities, Young brains are being washed of history, even logic itself. Science is being replaced by rote repetition of big lies. Children are being taught that a better, more fair world is being created, when in fact it is a totalitarian monstrosity being erected by Obama, a world of conformist beliefs, not thought, a world where centralized authority replaces individualism, a world where conformity and nihilism trumps creativity and faith. And when and where the Red Guards of America's once independent media and academic establishments, where they once sought out, removed, and attempted to destroy any symbol of American distinction and greatness, that's when you have no America left. For example, when the film American Sniper attracted the biggest box office in decades and threatens to bring the people together in their love of country and the military, the harlots of Hollywood's left with their fellow travelers in the media, have begun a campaign of hatred against this film and its hero and snipers in general. A hatred and vitriol which they dare not express towards the Islamic barbarians who are raping, beheading, and conquering, as did Hitler's Nazis. And just like the Red Guards had done in Mao's China during that cultural revolution, America's Red Brigades are working tirelessly to demoralize and defeat their natural enemy, the nation's most productive and patriotic citizens. And you have to understand something. One of the reasons I've always been drawn to art and even artists is, well, there's a number of reasons. It's very, very kind of multifaceted reasons. But if I'm telling you about food dogs, which I'm looking at right now in my radio studio, they're wooden. They were made in the 16, late 1600s, early 1700s, Ming, Ming China. Ming Dynasty China. They represent 
history and culture. That's what art does for me. That's why I'm drawn to art. Art is a preservation of our cultural history and their cultural history and the world's cultural history. And as I speak, your Muslim barbarian friends in Mosul are burning manuscripts and burning libraries to the ground, just as their ancestors did to the Alexandria Library.